Here is a live interview with one of the most popular renowned social activists from Nagaland, Mr. KK Sema, known by his name. Hello, sir. Hello. Uh, we would like to question some very pertinent issues that is prevailing in the country as well as in Nagaland. Yeah. So I hope you will be comfortable with that, sir. No problem. Uh, the first question that we would like to ask is, is secularism being considered to be limited from the constitution after 2019 Lok Sabha election? Secularism is the fundamental base within which India, with such diversity, has put in the constitution and can be made where no other religion will have any freedom. So yes, secularism is being contemplated to be removed from the Indian in which I think communities like the Christians in will have their share of burdens coming ahead of us. Thank you, sir. I opinion on Citizenship Amendment Bill, known by the name CAP, CAB, and how it will affect Nagaland as well as notice in future. No, I think this is the most dangerous part of today's politics in as far as India is concerned. CAB, Citizens Amendment Bill, proposes to bring in all the persecuted Hindus from Afghanistan, Pakistan, Bangladesh, including Christians, just as a face-saving intent. But the whole more than two, three crores of people from across our boundary are going to be brought in under the CAB, Citizens Amendment Bill. And Northeast is the only place they can lump all these immigrants that are going to get citizenship, the equal right that you and I have for property, for everything. Now, government of uh, Nagaland has been saying that Article 371 will protect us, ILP will protect us and so on and so forth. This is a myth. ILP will not protect us. Nagaland is already full of IBF, uh, uh, Bangladeshi immigrants, illegal immigrants, and we have been able to do nothing because ILP is just another excuse. Bureaucrats have been using this ILP as a basis of making pocket money and Nagaland, if we are going to depend on ILP, thinking it will protect us, we have already lost a lot of ground already. Article 371 is not going to protect the Nagas in any fashion because there are other areas like, I don't know, a civil code maybe, when the uniform civil code comes in, in which case no customary law will be applicable and BJP is intending to introduce even the civil uniform civil code when they form a government next time. So there you are. Your question as to how secu secure we are. We are not secure at all. Thank you, sir. And third question I would like to ask is, would the Christians be happy if anti-conversion bill is passed in the Indian Parliament after 2019 looks about election? Well, in the first place, Christians are already being persecuted left, right and center all across the board in India. And the churches are being burned, churches are being vandalized, our pastors and evangelists and everybody that are working in the mission are being persecuted. Our Christians are finding it awfully difficult to even come out into the public area without fear. That never happened ever in India. But with BJP, today Christians in India are suffering seriously. We are a Christian majority state and therefore we may not think so critically about how much Christians are suffering in the mainland India. But let me tell you, for those who are listening, once anti-conversion bill comes up, then Christians trying to convert anybody else into Christianity will be persecuted by law the moment anti-conversion bill is passed and becomes an act. Then 
there will be no conversion. It means that the activity of Christianity is going to be put to a halt completely and totally. And so, BJP intends to introduce the anti-conversion bill in the parliament in their next session if they do win the parliamentary election. This is a moment of a very critical situation where Christians will have to decide whether they will want to pass uh, or vote, drop their votes into the ballot box for a Hindu religion as Christians. That is the decision that Nagas as Christians have to decide this coming elections. Okay, thank you, sir. And one last question that I want to ask is, what would be the impact of universal civil court if it is passed in the parliament after 2019 Lok Sabha elections passed by BJP? You see, the BJP intends, it's already six, seven years since the whole process of uh, BJP's philosophy has been put on the ground. Uniform civil code means Hindu laws will be applicable all throughout India. So the Muslims have their own customary laws Nagas have our own customary laws, but when Uniform Civil Code is implemented, passed and becomes an act, it means our customary law as protected by Article 371 will no longer be relevant and that the Muslims will have no uh, law of their own like us, Nagas have, it becomes a Hindu law applicable all over the country and that no matter who we are, we are going to have to live by that Hindu law. Well, if that Christians or Muslims as it may be are prepared to accept that kind of a situation, then, then vote for BJP and the Hindu Hindutva RSS crowd as a Christian so that all of us can be buried alive. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, while summing up, um, would you like to give some message to the people of Nagaland as elections are approaching and will be conducted on 11th April 2019? So what will be your message to the people and the people across the states and including the rural areas? Please, summing up. I would say this is a very seriously momentous time when all Nagas across the board as Christians must decide whether they are Christians or Hindus. It is a simple contest between secularism and those who are against it. BJP wants Hindutva. Congress wants secularism to continue as has been the fundamental base of India, where all religion has had the comforts of their own religion, the freedom of their own religion. And this is a question that is being put in danger. As far as the Nagas are concerned, you can have the biggest churches, the most beautiful looking churches, but when you cast your vote, your beautiful churches makes no significance because your vote goes to the Hindus. And that is the decision that I think Nagas, be it in the urban sectors or the rural sectors, will have to make their final decision. It is Christians' call to vote for the Hindus because this is a fight between an open field of free, liberal, protected identity of even the minorities like the Nagas and those who want to wipe out that identity of any minorities in this country. Therefore, my message to the yes. people is, please, for once in our lives, let us prove ourselves to be Christians and vote for Christianity rather than Hinduism that BJP wants to establish in India. Yeah. That's and about the one message. One more last question is, what will be the message to the youth of Nagaland, especially in this 2019 Lok Sabha election? You see, I as an activist have been concerned about the youth in the state. Government of India cannot, uh, government of in, uh, Nagaland cannot absorb this many educated youth coming into the field. Employment is not available for everybody. And therefore, 
government's responsibility is to ensure that entrepreneurship for all youngsters must be opened out so that when one educated man becomes an entrepreneur, he can help employ another youngster to join in his venture. That way, employment can, can get generated and each of you youngsters in Nagaland become an employer rather than looking for employment to yourself. Now, government must work out appropriate schemes within which entrepreneurship is opened out to our young generations and we must also try and ask our national workers to leave our younger gener generation trying to work out their future without being taxed. This is, I think, a message not only to the government but to our uh, national workers. Help our younger generation to take roots and grow because even if we do get independence, it is the younger generation who are successful in life, will build that new Nagaland that we all are dreaming about. So this is the message to the youngsters. We've got to fight for a system. If we want to change, then it is these kind of system that can change. And with people, as far as I'm concerned, I'm in Congress. And if I am in Congress, as far as I'm concerned, these are my priorities that I would always fight for. The youngsters are our future and it is worth fighting for. And I would appeal to all of you to join me in the dreams that I have for all of you. Thank you so much. This was an interview and fruitful interview with our renowned social activist and a congressman, Sir K.K. Sema, known by the name K.K. Sema. Thank you so much, sir. You're welcome.